Hey, this is Gerds Handel, and welcome to the Inner Light Project. This show is for anyone who's wanting to lead a happier, healthier, and enlightened life. Create more self love, inject more joy and abundance into their daily life. Join me for inspiring interviews and spiritual topics so you can shine your inner light. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Inner Light Project. My name is Gerd Tunzel and today I'm just so grateful to share this episode today and it's all about the power of sobriety. Now this one's quite special because it's actually my own journey of how I became sober. I'm actually sober 11 years this month. I'm just so grateful for this journey and also the theme of this month is all about sobriety. So there's actually two episodes before me that are talking about their journeys of how they became sober and why it's so important to become more mindful about how much how much we are drinking and how much we are not allowing ourselves to receive the medicine from within. Now as I said this episode is all about sobriety and my own journey but also this week is a powerful moment as well because it's the full moon um it's a full moon in virgo so it's all about letting go of what no longer serves us allowing ourselves to just really let go of anything that is holding us back from being our powerful authentic self so yeah as i said that this episode is all about my personal journey so it's been 11 years since i last drank alcohol and the reason that is is because alcohol was not a good way it was alcohol was holding me back alcohol was a way to numb my emotions it wasn't allowing me to be my best self and so back in 2013 gosh sounds like a long time ago I decided to make the decision to quit alcohol it was only supposed to be for a month which led then to six months and now here we are 11 years and the reason that happened was because I decided to go on a date with somebody that I went to university with in my first degree and we both had decided the first half of the date he was going to take me somewhere and the second half of the day I had decided where we were going and so as I was about to head out I felt really nervous which is not like me I've always been quite confident in my own skin and I suddenly felt nervous about the date and so I decided to reach out for a glass of wine and I noticed myself going hmm that's a bit strange to be drinking this by yourself and so I actually poured the glass down the sink and the whole bottle and realized something's not right here And I'd already known that I was using alcohol as a way to numb my pain. And so I went on the date and then later on I had a drink with them and I realized that it wasn't a healthy situation for me anyway. So already my body was telling me that the person and what I was doing was not healthy for me. But back then I didn't understand it fully the way I do now and I understand energies and entities and why it's so important to understand your surroundings and your environments and and the power of our inner light. And so yeah, after that, I decided, let me just have a week of not drinking. I didn't tell anybody, then I did a month. And then I shared that with a close friend of mine and I went on a, on a night out with her and her friend at the time. And she thought it was funny. She's like, you can't last for a week. And I was like, okay, okay. And she, she had changed a lot since I'd known her before. And then she tried to pour a drink down my throat and I had to push her away. And that was the journey of also me stepping back from people that I knew who didn't respect my boundaries, who didn't respect my choices in life. She thought it was funny. I did not find that funny. And actually our friendship kind of dissolved a few months later after that. And it was quite sad looking back, but also I couldn't be around an environment that did not respect my decision. And it was all about alcohol. You know, when somebody makes a decision about quitting drinking, it's not something that they're just like, oh yeah, I've just I've just thought about it. It's something they've really sat with and realized actually maybe this is a shift for me and I need to transform part, a part of my life. And so as I started to transform my life, I'd already started being on this journey of doing the inner work. And actually in 2012, I was made redundant. I had a cancer scare and this was all around my 25th birth, birthday. So when I started in 2013 of February, that was my transformation again. It was like, I don't need alcohol to have a good time. I'm actually quite silly anyway. And so I remember going on on nights out with a few friends whilst being sober in the early stages. And I'd be dancing around, being silly. And then people would come up to me and say, are you drunk? And I'm like, no, I haven't had a sip. And they'd like, prove it. So I'm like, smell my breath. And they're like, oh, that's so strange. I'm like, no, I just don't need to have alcohol to have a good time. And it was really confusing for them because obviously the environment that we had lived in or whilst growing up in 
you know, only silly people would do something, you know, only drunk or silly people would do something like that. And I was just being free and they couldn't understand that. I didn't need alcohol to just be my authentic self. And so, yeah, that led up to that journey, but also I was on this deep journey of a spiritual awakening. I was looking at patterns of my life where what had happened to me. I'd also looked at, you know, started to look into why I lacked self-love, how to love myself. And slowly I was starting to understand about boundaries and protection. So at that stage in my life, quitting alcohol was a blessing because it wasn't serving me. And also it, I was using it to numb my emotions. Growing up, I didn't have a support mechanism to share my emotions because I grew up being told that we don't share anything because if you share something, somebody will... You know, somebody will uh, take advantage of you. And I look back and think, actually, really? You know, if you don't have no connection to your story, nobody can take advantage of you. But this is a mentality from the older, gener the older generation where they keep things private and they don't share things. Okay, yes, some things we don't need to share with everybody. But if we think everything has to be a secret, then that restricts us when we're emotional or we're sad and we need a support mechanism. And so, yeah, I realized that it wasn't serving me. And I noticed that, I started drinking at a young age, before the legal age, because back then you could get away with it in my time. And um, yeah, I started using it as a way to numb my emotions. If I was upset or angry about something, I would turn to alcohol. I would secretly drink it and it wasn't right. You know, I did go through a lot growing up, but you know, I didn't really need the alcohol. But at that time, I didn't really have a support mechanism to share how I was feeling or what I was feeling. And, you know, with friends, they were always like, you're so happy, but inside I was a hot mess. But I was that person that listened to everybody else's problems, except I wasn't getting support myself because I didn't know how to receive support. I just learned that you just help everyone else. Like, who am I to have support? I, you know, I don't deserve support. Why should I have support? And so that was something I had to really unlearn as I went on my deep spiritual growth. And so, yeah, I noticed as I got older, you know, if relationships didn't work out, somebody passed away, I was having some issues at home or with friendship circles breaking down, alcohol was the way for me. And so even at university having competitions, you know, I was the person that would, you know, jokingly, you know, be silly and drink pff, competition, like do competitions and have lots of shots with friends. You know, I can handle my drink. I'm a strong woman. You know, it's really strange when I look back. <laughs> like, why would I want to damage my body to prove a point to somebody? That, that just sounds so stupid to me looking back now. But, you know, that was a journey that I had to go through. That was a lesson that I had to learn. And I have compassion for myself for going through that journey anyway. But yeah, I'm just grateful that I did quit drinking when I did because when I quit drinking in 2013 by 2015 I had a kidney problem and by 2017 I had an operation had I not quit drinking previously I would have not had a kidney right now so there's always a blessing as to why we do what we do there's always a blessing as to why our soul and our body says we've got to shift something and you know, it's not just actually my 11 year anniversary of being sober, it's actually my 10 years anniversary of being a vegetarian, four years being vegan, and I did once do one year of being chocolate free, but that didn't last too long. <laughs> that one, that will take time, you know, I'll have a sweet tooth, I have to admit. Um, but it's also, it's also the month where I lost somebody that was very close to me of 17 years. So it's actually on the same day, which is the 7th of February, and the reason I did that was as a reminder, but also to honor him as well because this person was very close to me at that time he was the love of my life we planned to get married unfortunately he passed away and so he was that trigger for me to realize I need to make a shift in my life instead of feeling sorry for myself I need to get up and make a shift and so that's when I chose to quit alcohol that's when I chose to become a vegan and a veggie when but again that wasn't because other people were telling me it's because my soul was telling me but also I tend to do things like as a joke oh yeah I'll just quit alcohol for a week and then oh no six months oh 11 years here we go <laughs> and so that has become my journey actually it's even a more powerful month because it's actually the anniversary of my uncle who passed away six years ago but it's also my one year anniversary of leaving my ex-partner so it is such a powerful month for me sobriety is just for me I don't even see sobriety about alcohol I feel it's almost like sobriety of my whole life just shifting and evolving and, and for me this month is always a very powerful month of letting the past go 
you know, people say, oh, December's the, 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 the month of letting go. But for me, February has always been the month of letting go, shedding the old past, you know, letting the old energy go. And it's almost like a rebirth for me. So this is why I always find this month so interesting because yes, it's about my sobriety journey, but it's also other parts of my journey that has led me to where I am. And I really honor February because February has this powerful energy. We're just about to head into spring. It's letting go of that wintry energy. You know, it's that calm, quiet energy. We've been nestling in winter. We're ready for energy of the spring, the rebirth. You know, the plants are regrowing. The trees are having leaves. The sun is shining more. It's such a powerful energy. And as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, also a full moon this week. So on Saturday is a full moon in Virgo. It's a powerful time to let the old shit go. So if there's anything from last year that's been lingering, if there's anything in your life that started in January that you're finding hard to let go, write it down and let it go. Because when we let it go, we allow new things to come into our life. We allow creativity to flow. We allow abundance to come into our life. We allow the magic to begin but we have to allow ourselves to let go. We have to allow ourselves to feel, deal and heal our trauma to set ourselves free. So when I really felt in that I wanted to quit alcohol, it wasn't just something like a whim. Yes, it started off as a joke, but it became something more deeper than that. It was a connection to myself. It was a connection saying, I respect myself. I respect my body. I respect my journey. I respect who I'm becoming. And I'm taking my power back. You see, when you quit alcohol, you take your power back. When you allow yourself to listen to that medicine from within, my gosh, your life will shift. It will transform. You will no longer need validation from the outside world. You'll no longer need a deep someone to come and save you or fix you. You just listen to that magic from within. Now, I'm not saying don't have support because we all need support. You know, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There's times where I need support and connection from my friends and family. And that's absolutely fine. But what I'm talking is about when we can't sometimes make decisions, that's when we're, we need to tap in from within and listen to our intuition because our intuition will always guide us. You know, your gut. Think about the time where you've not listened to your gut and gone, oh, why didn't I listen to myself? Because you're too busy listening to the outer world, you were giving your power away. But our gut never lies, it always leads us to the right place. And so I've always done that where I trust my gut and allow myself to receive. And when I didn't, I'd always go, ah, why didn't I do that? And it's always a reminder, like, I don't know if you've had that where you go into a shop and you're like, hmm, do I need that? No, 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 no. And then you leave and then you get home and, and realize you actually ran out of it. And you're like, oh my God, why didn't I buy it? That's you not trusting your gut. And I've done that so many times. I've learned, okay, I'm not just thinking about that for the sake of it. There's a reason why I've gone into that aisle and there's a reason why I'm looking at that thing. It probably means that I need it. And so I always trust that. And every time I haven't trusted it, I've had to then go back. (laughs) But again, going back to the power of sobriety. Yeah, I really did use it as a numbing tool. Now, so many people use alcohol as a way to numb their emotions. And I know I did, but also it's not just the emotion, like, like, you know, using alcohol, there is drugs, people use, you know, cigarettes, there is people use food as a way to deal with their emotions. But also people use ayahuasca, which is something that people go and get done a lot of the times in the Amazon rainforest. They have it once and then they become addicted. Now I'm not saying everybody, but there are people that I, I've known for the last 13, 14 years and I've seen them just become so addicted to getting the answers from ayahuasca or having psychedelics, you know, and it, it gave me this rebirth and it gave me this idea and I must take that now or I must smoke weed and, you know, I, and I've seen people do that, but I'm like, do you really need that? Because that's an external thing. When we do the inner work, we don't need the external thing. We don't need the external validation or the external comfort because the comfort comes from within. Now, I remember on my journey, I think it was in 2013, a friend of mine, we got on like a house on fire. She was all about spirituality. She was a model. She then went in the journey of self-healing and helping people. And she was all about ayahuasca and she was telling me the journey. And I was like, oh, this sounds exciting. And I was, I was about to go on to it. And then I thought about it. Why do I need something outside? to help me work on the inside. 
And I remember thinking, I'll just do the inner work. And I didn't even know that this terminology inner work, but you know, existed back then, but I knew I'd had to do the work from within. And when I uncovered the darkness within myself, the ancestral, the cultural, the society, familial, patriarchal patterns, you know, my money trauma, my financial trauma, my relationships trauma, you name it. That's when the magic happened not from taking stuff, not from taking alcohol, not for overeating and indulging in things, you know, that's what I realized. And people around me who've done ayahuasca, like, I, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But for me personally, I, I, I realized I don't need things on the external side to help me heal from within. Because the answers lie within. There's a reason why this podcast is called The Inner Light Project. Because we all have a light from within us. We all have abundance within us. You know, the reason it's called The Inner Light Project, it used to be called Get Inspired With Goods many years ago. And we were also on the radio, on UK Health Radio many years ago. <laughs> was because when I woke up from my operation in 2017, I heard inner light. Because we all have an inner light. You have an inner light. And when you are putting things into that inner light, drugs, alcohol, other substances, you know, excessive food or whatever it is, you are dimming that light. You are not allowing yourself to receive the medicine. You're actually suppressing the medicine from coming out within you to connect with you, to trust your intuition, to trust your third eye, to trust yourself. And the moment I quitted drinking alcohol, the moment my intuition Whew, skyrocketed. I started to observe things. I started to pay attention. I noticed my energy. I noticed my intuition getting stronger and stronger. There were lots of other things like we can go on about it, but like there's fluoride toothpaste. I stopped doing fluoride toothpaste. And, you know, I dated, <laughs> I dated a guy who is a dentist and he used to say to me, no, you need to have fluoride toothpaste. And I was like, no, but it, I can notice how it makes me feel. And he's like, what do you mean? You're going to damage my, your teeth. And I was like, did they use fluoride toothpaste back in the day? Probably not. Did God use to fluoride toothpaste? Probably not. But, you know, I understood where he was coming from. But I was trying to see because my intuition say, was saying to me, I don't need fluoride toothpaste. Let me just try fluoride free. And again, my intuition got stronger and stronger. And I noticed when I have it again, it would affect me. And that's my point with alcohol. I noticed when I took it out, my intuition just went whoosh. I could start to really trust myself and not doubt myself. I started to notice and observe things around me. And it was so fascinating. But also, it makes you look younger. So people don't believe my age, but I'm 36 turning 37 at the end of this year. And I actually look 10 years younger than what I actually look like. I was actually going for a walk today near the river. And the guy stopped me and started. we started having a chat. And he was like, are you in your mid are you in your mid 20s and I said no and he's like what and I told him my age and he was he was shocked I was like yeah it's just you know when you choose to be happy you trust yourself and you don't rely on on, on external things you know you look useful you look younger again it's with food you know instead of like eating junk food all the time you know there's a reason why you're getting spots and stuff but we don't always pay attention to it but when you eat young um, eat younger I don't mean that <laughs> when you um, when you eat healthily you do notice that your skin starts to look youthful, you look younger, you feel healthier, you feel more joyful. And that's what happens when you eliminate alcohol. I know for me as well, it was a social setting as well with alcohol because it wasn't just me dealing with my emotions, but also with the work environment that I was in at the time, I used to be a journalist. And so you would have to go to meetings during the day. Even when I worked as a financial publisher, you'd have to go to meetings and have a drink and ha 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 and, and have a conversation. You know, it was, most of the time it's all to do with deals. And then in the evening, oh, we've got to go socialize. Let's go to the pub and do a quiz and have a few drinks or let's go out this weekend. And so it becomes a pattern in your life. And I know for me at that time, because I was dealing with the news industry, because that, that was one of the industries I worked in, it was negative news. It was making me sad and depressed. And so then I used alcohol as a way to numb that emotion because back then I didn't know I was a highly sensitive person. Back then I didn't know that I was an empath. I didn't know that I was absorbing energies. And because I didn't know how to protect myself at that point or release um, the energy at that time or transmute the energy, if you want to say that, um, I then absorbed it and I felt the pain of others and the emotions of others and, 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 you know, the negativity of others. And therefore, that was my way of escaping from feeling what I was feeling or transmuting the energy. And so, yeah, a lot of people that I've met on my journey, of, on, on, on being on this journey of doing the inner work, 
a lot of us used alcohol as a way to numb our pain because we didn't know how to connect with ourselves at that point in our journey. And the reason that is, is because we've never been taught that from a young age, how to connect with ourselves. There is no knowledge of self. You know, from a young age, we're told to get a good education, to get a good job. Once you get a good job, get married, get a house, get a car, have kids. You know, it's all these little things that we need to hit. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But when that becomes our main obsession and we don't actually have a connection with ourselves, that's why people have midlife crisis. That's why people have quarter life crisis because I had a quarter life crisis. That is why people are using alcohol, drugs, food and other things as an addiction because they have no connection with their emotions, their feelings. And we weren't taught to, you know, connect with our feelings and understand ourselves. You know, if you had a bit of a high or low moment, people are like, oh, there's something wrong with you. They've got mind health problems. Actually, no, we all have mind health issues. But the thing is, it's learning how to connect with our emotions. You know, we don't need to use other things. And so when we have a connection and we learn about ourselves and we learn to understand our emotions, how we behave, how we act, how we think, what we feel, what we want, then we're able to shift that. Then we realize we don't need these external validation. We don't need these other substances to make ourselves feel better. You know, I saw it within my own culture growing up. I'm, I'm, I come from a culture that is Indian. And, you know, you, I saw growing up all the, the, we call them uncles, but they're not really your uncles. It's just, it's people that you know. <laughs> and, you know, you'd see this pattern at weddings, like drinking off the head. And, you know, we are these bad boys, you know, like prove you can drink, you're this, you're that. And I look back and think, God, that is ridiculous. And, you know, later down the line, because in my culture back then, women didn't drink, which was interesting. And so when women started drinking as well, like it became like a competition. And, you know, it's really sad when I look at it because I, I now understand that, you know, it's not, most people are not drinking it for joy. Most people are drinking it to suppress how they're feeling. You know, there's a lot of expectations in cultures. They need to be this, they need to get the great job, they need to have this, they need to have that that's not life you know life is is, is loving yourself and the, and the key to loving yourself is not destroying yourself from within it's nourishing yourself giving yourself the right foods the right supplements the right everything that makes you happy and joyful and so yeah I realized that 11 years ago I thought let me try let me see how I get along and I remember about probably two years into it where I was at a friend's birthday party and she was like oh do you want to drink oh sorry no I know you don't drink anymore and I was like, oh, let me just smell the alcohol. And I smelled the drink. And it was actually my favorite drink at the time. And I was like, oh, I used to love this drink years ago. And I was like, I don't miss it. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah, I don't miss it. The smell is, is it revolting to me. And it was interesting. The same thing happened to me when I quit um, meat. So when I became a vegetarian, you know, again, I loved, like, I actually loved chicken <laughs> growing up. I loved chicken. It was one of my favorite things. You know, I used to love a Sunday roast and everything. I used to love ham. Oh my God. Like ham and salad, salad sandwiches. Oh my God. I was obsessed with them growing up as a child. And the way my mum would make them. Oh my God. They were amazing. But yeah, I remember just deciding, let me just take meat out of my diet. And because I had a lot of stomach problems and issues, which, which I realized was always making me tired. And so when I went, it was probably about six months into it, I went past the meat section in the supermarket and I could smell the meat and it was actually making me sick. And I was like, oh my God, that's really strange because I've never had that connection before. And so that's when I realized that's it, I, I can't eat meat. Now, I'm not saying that I won't eat meat in the future. Who knows? I don't know where my journey is going to take me. But, you know, it was interesting to see that how my body uh, was rejecting that. So when your body starts to reject things, that's the key to pay attention to. Because your body knows before your mind that you need to shift somebody, uh, that you need to shift something in your life. So I knew back then that I needed to quit alcohol. I needed to quit meat. Thank God I quitted meat and alcohol because too much protein in the diet can cause a kidney problem. I already had a kidney problem, but I would have damaged the kidney. I wouldn't have been able to save the kidney that I needed to. So it was all a blessing in disguise, which I didn't even know back then, which it just blows my mind how my, my body knew before my mind did. But that is the power of connection. And once we listen to that, you know, animals listen to that all the time. You know, dogs listen to that all the time. You know, animals in the rainforest, they know when things are about to happen. They know when an earthquake is going to happen. They know they can sense danger miles away from and we can do that too, but the difference is we haven't connected to self because we are using substances like alcohol, which is holding us back. And so as you let go of alcohol and when you choose to, 
your body does become sensitive. You do become more of aware of your environment and your surroundings. You do notice how people treat you as well when you decide to quit drinking. And on the on both the episodes that I had with the people previously on on the the show, we all said the same thing. It was just interesting how that the moment we quit quit drinking alcohol people got offended which we thought was very strange like it's a choice that we're making we're not telling the other person to quit alcohol but they're kind of looking at us like we think we're better than ourselves and that's not true and it's the same becoming a vegan I remember how people reacted when I said I was a vegan oh my god like giving me a lecture about veganism and stuff and I'm like well I'm just gonna see how it goes you know I'm not one of these people that will lecture you about things you know because I, I don't believe in that because everyone's journey is different you know if you're meant to quit drinking great if you're meant to great you know even this episode I'm not saying for you to quit but I'm just saying have an awareness as to why you're doing it if it's just for a celebration reason if it's for you know enjoyment that's great but if it's because you're numbing your emotions then I would I would pay attention to that as to why you're doing it because there's something deeper that you need to learn about yourself there's something that is is telling you that "Mm, that's not right and we really need to tap from within so that is the reason why I'm sharing this is because I want you to understand as to to why you're doing what you're doing now yeah going back to the vegan judgment it you know I wasn't going out and saying do not eat me you know oh that's disgusting you know if somebody asked me a question I would share but I would never go out my way because most of the time people that are lecturing other people about things actually stop doing it themselves I always find that really fascinating and I've seen it around me many times but you know your journey is yours yours is your unique journey your connection with your higher self so trust that my higher self was telling me for a long time to quit alcohol and it took me going back to that date where I was scared to actually go on that date with that guy that I needed a glass of wine was the sign of the universe saying to me that's not right obviously I didn't understand that energy back then but it was by trying to protect me saying maybe you shouldn't go go to that date either but I didn't understand that bit but what I did understand was the alcohol bit that something was not right for me and I needed to shift and change this and you know even just the other day I was walking on around the river where I'm at right now and I met this guy who was in his 70s and he was talking to me about his journey he'd been a businessman and he decided to change his life and he's been sober 14 years and how when he decided to do yoga and you know change his life people around him are saying you're in a cult you know you're full of yourself and he's like what I just chose to change my life and I have more inner peace in my life than I've ever had before and it's interesting how society will do that when you do something a little bit different to what society's doing there's something wrong with you and it's because they can't put you into a box they don't know where to put you and so even now even with me people like gosh who is she who does she think she is and it's like I don't think I'm not full of myself I don't care I just know myself that's the difference and when you know yourself and know what you want it scares people it makes them feel uncomfortable it actually triggers the fuck out of them and I know I trigger the fuck out of people and I've realized that and it's taken me many years as to why you know I'll just stand there and somebody will get pissed off at me and I'm like what have I done you know it was never really about me you know if somebody's getting irritated with you it's it's really most of the time it's never about you it's some kind of wound that's being triggered within themselves it's something from their childhood so when I quitted alcohol and my friend was acting the way she did it was a trigger within her it was nothing to do with me it was nothing to do with my story it was that something within her probably knew that I was about to shift and change but also that who is she to do that because I'm doing that but again that's her journey you know she had to go on her journey just like I had to go on my journey and I just again like I want to just reiterate this that you can change your life at any moment in any time of your life you deserve so much more you know if you're using alcohol to you know um, if you're using alcohol to suppress your pain please really listen into that because it's trying to tell you something it's trying to say it's time to heal from within you know you were not born to suffer you were born to live an amazing magnificent life you're born to have abundance you were born to have joy you were born to have gifts in your life you were born to just live this beautiful abundant joyful being who you are don't ever forget that and don't feel the need to suppress it with things because when you set yourself free you enter that joyful state whenever you you want to And you know, if no one's ever said this to you, I just want to remind you that wherever you're at in your journey, I love you, I honor you, I respect you, and you've got this. You know, if you're thinking about quitting alcohol, congratulations, welcome to a new powerhouse journey that you're about to embark on. 
Welcome to meeting a new version of yourself that you've never met before. Welcome to a version of yourself that is going to transform your life. And if you're not on that journey as well, welcome to just listening to this episode and and, and starting to just question things a little bit. That just shows that you're ready to just make some changes in your life. And it doesn't have to be alcohol. It can be any kind of substance in your life. If you're starting to notice how it's affecting you, that's a beautiful shift. You know, I honor you. I respect you. You know, it's so powerful when we allow ourselves to receive that medicine from within and and say, yes, I'm ready to shift. Yes, it's going to feel uncomfortable. Yes, people around you are going to get pissed off. Yes, people, there will be people supporting you. Let the people who support you support you. And anyone that doesn't support you on that journey, then just take a step back and let them just learn what they need to learn. But it's not your problem. You don't need to explain and, you know, go into depth as to why you're doing it. This is something that is so important to you and magnificent, can't even say the word, <laughs> magnificent. You know, I wouldn't be sat here for 11 years moving forward saying that I am sober if I didn't hold those boundaries and respected myself, you know? So I just want to honor you on that journey. And also, if you're struggling right now, there are, you know, please do Google places that can help you to become sober. If you're struggling to transform your trauma, you're more than welcome to send me an email at info at gerdshundle.com and we can have a complimentary call and talk how, how you can transform your trauma and learn to trust yourself so you can powerfully move forward in your life. You know, you do not need to suffer in silence. You know, I've, I and I've learned that, that we, do, you know, when we try to suffer in silence, we actually hurt ourselves. We all need support. We all need help you know it's natural we're humans you know we're here to have connections we're here to have communities we're here to have support and so if you need any help please let me know and if i cannot help you i'll always support and guide you to somebody that can now unfortunately that's the end of the show but before i leave i want to leave you normally i'd leave you with a quote but i'm feeling a message coming through me today trust the process you are greater than you know you're powerful than you can even feel but you are a connection to source energy. You are a magnificent light. You are beautiful. You are bright. You are joyful. You are free. You are a child of universal gifts. Embrace who you are and don't let anybody tell you anything else. Take care, my sisters, and I'll see you in the next episode. For more information about the show or how to trust your inner light, visit my new coaching program at gerdshandle.com. And remember, stay happy, stay healthy, stay lit. Lit.